Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I happen to have picked up this little cabinet. It's two feet tall, um, three drawers, and one little cabinet on this side. And it's cute, but kind of dated. So it does have little hardware that I have removed, which I will be using again, which are just little rings. Right? So they fit the piece, they go with it well. Um, the screws are still in here. They're kind of embedded well. And I don't want to remove them because you can see that they're sort of impacting the rattan. So if I can leave them in place, that means less damage to the piece. And as much as there's a round base that kind of covers that, why push it? Um, so I am looking for this piece to be a fairly fast finish. Um, selling it in the shop, I'm not going to be able to ask, a, a, you know, a lot of money for it. So I don't want to spend tons of my time on it because I'll never recoup that. And that's one of the things to consider. It's the difference between, it's the difference between painting it for yourself and painting it for resale. If you're painting it for yourself, spend all the time you need to make it turn out to be exactly what you want for your space. Um, that's the fun of it, that's the joy of it. If you're painting for resale, you have to consider <clears throat> how much did I pay for the piece? I thrifted this, so I paid $10. Um, so I need to charge at least 10 to get my money back. What's the cost of the paint and materials? I am just using, I plan to use stuff that is open and on my shelves. And as much as I now carry Fusion in the store, I have old Fusion up on my shelves from earlier projects when I didn't carry it, when maybe that's the color the customer wanted and then I never used again. So I've got some colors that have been sitting on my shelves for like four years. So bless this paint. <laughs> Put a little plastic over it and um, it, it hangs in there just well. Just. I mean, it's thicker, so I have a little bit of water to thin it down, but I'm gonna be mixing it in another container. I don't wanna add tap water to the jar because then if it's sitting again for a while on my shelf, you're gonna get impurities and it's gonna go moldy. If you needed to add to the jar, use distilled water so that you it's pure. Um, but I'm gonna mix outside of it and then use it, in which case it's gonna be fine. So, same thing for anything else I do for this. I want it to be scraps. I want it, to, I'm not opening any new packages. I'm not doing, you know, anything. Um, I'm debating using a transfer. If I do, it's gonna be an extra one that that is in the shop, an old one, a discontinued one, something that nobody's buying. If I don't have some already open ones that I wanna use instead. so. That's my plan for this, that this is truly kind of a thrifted piece. Now, I do have this color of green, which is called Upper Canada. It's a little bit, um, I don't wanna say louder than I want because it's really not a bold color. It's quite lovely, but you can see how thick that is. So I'm kinda, you know, plopping it down into my container because it's, it's quite thick. Um, but I was thinking about something maybe a little bit paler on the piece. So the only thing that you want to do if you are kind of hand mixing a color is mix enough for the piece because you're, you're not going to get it exact again. I do have a pebble, which is, I don't know if you can hear that, much more liquid. So it's a fresher jar and I'm going to be able to pour this. So you can see I had a lot of the green, a um, couple of tablespoons of pebble, which is a light gray. And I'm just looking to see if it's kind of lightening it up. I mean, I could have gone white, but I didn't have a white open of fusion. I do in the Jamie Ray Vintage line, which I may end up mixing lines because again, I'm just grabbing a tablespoon or two. There's no point in. Um, so you can see this is kind of graded out. It has softened the color a lot. 
So I'm thinking I'm going to try a little bit more. It's kind of fun. I love color mixing. I don't know if you guys do it or not. Usually I'll kind of mix on um, a piece of acetate first so that if I don't get a color I like, I'm not wasting my paint. But um, I'm okay with weird oddball colors sitting on my shelf. Okay, that's kind of where I want it. So you can see, let me see if I can, if I can do this. There's the original green, this is the green that we're at. It's a little bit grayed out and um, I may be doing more with it. So the only thing is that it's still fairly thick. I'm gonna have to work it down into all of those crevices. So I am gonna add a bit of water to just thin it down a little bit so that it helps me be able to work it in. I'd rather do, in this instance, two thin coats than get too thick of a coat and have it sitting in any of these little ridges that are on there. Okay, so now we paint. And because I'm gonna be pushing it into those crevices, I'm just using a chip brush that's gonna help me be able to get it down in there. And so rather than just kind of doing this, where you can see how that just hits the top surface, gives you a lovely te textured pattern though, I'm kind of wiggling it down in, I'm using more of a circular motion to be able to work it down into all those little crevices so that I get a nice uniform coverage. And that's part of the difference with a textured surface like this. If you're looking to do more of a dry brush so that you still have some of that dark showing through, which is lovely, or if you're going for um, a solid coverage, which is what I'm after this time. So I'm gonna get this piece all painted out. I think two light coats, and then we'll come back for what we're doing next. And I fully expect I'm gonna take advantage of some of that texture because it's too nice to pass. As so often happens with these things, plans change. Um, so I have the first coat of paint on this and I had been planning on doing a second coat. I needed to mix up more of the paint and so I decided to do a little bit of a contrasting color. Not hugely different. So this has got a little bit of blue. So exactly the same mix and this time I added just a couple of dollops of a homestead blue, which is kind of this blue green, just so that I could do two things. One, kind of dry brush it over this section, and then two, uh, solidly brush the other section. So we get a, you know, a slight two-tone effect going. I just have my green paintbrush here, and I want to just lightly dry brush it. So I'm just painting on my canvas. And I just want to dry brush this over. So I'm gonna have a little bit of the wood showing. I'm gonna have a little bit of that um, first coat of that green showing. And then I've got this little bit of the blue green showing. So it's just, it's very subtle, it's hard for you guys to see on the screen, and I get that, but I didn't want to do it and not let you know that that's what I've done. So it just, it makes it a little bit more of an interesting look for um, just kind of the basic finish. And I think that you can see here a little bit of that tonal shift, that tonal difference. It's just got a little bit more oomph to it. I was just finding that plain green just a little bit bland. And, you know, we're just gonna spice it up just a little bit. Um, 
that blue kind of takes a little bit into a, a greenier shade. So this becomes my second coat and then we'll come back. All right, I have this all painted and I've given it the night to dry so it's ready to apply anything else. I know that I likely want to add some gold to it, but I think because of the texture and everything, I maybe want to do a little bit of golden rule so it's sort of translucent, so I'm going to do that last. What I do want to do is apply some transfers, and as much as it's kind of a little um, uneven texture, I'm going to give it a try. And in the interest of using up stuff, that is floating around here, I am gonna use some of the um, bungalow transfer. I had done uh, a bunch of it. I used a lot of it on the inside backing of a uh, little hutch, little antique hutch. So I have all kinds of odds and ends of pieces that I figure perfect, perfect time to use them up. So that's what we're gonna do. So, I cut this piece down to sort of fit in this panel. Maybe cut a little smaller than I needed to, but that's okay. Now, I do have that hole. <laughs> that hole. Just kind of see if I can. I have the little um, screws for the hardware that are sticking out. So I'm just looking to kind of push my transfer around it. Not great, but it'll do. Okay. So I have my little tool and I'm just going to start to apply this. And I'm thinking I'm gonna start up here by the hole so that I can maybe get it down and then lift it off the rest of it. uneven rippled surface my transfer is starting to detach. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a close-up of this and I'm not sure that the camera is going to be able to capture it. Normally when we apply our transfers we kind of go up and back and sideways using the flat end of the stick. That works for a flat surface. This is what I'm not sure that the camera will show you is that it's taking, it's releasing in little spots where it's hitting the highs. In order to be able to work on this un, uneven surface, I'm going with the flat of the blade and then I'm taking the edge of the blade and I'm going and hitting all the lows. And that's where you really see the transfer start to release fully because now that transfer is, has made full contact with the high and the lows. So it's a little bit more work, but it definitely releases quite easily. And then when I'm burnishing, I'm taking that, that shiny paper, the backing paper, and I'm taking my fingernail and I am rubbing it down into all those crevices as well to make sure that it's really adhered. All right, this is already looking super cute. I like this a lot, and I really like when you're close up to it, sort of the two-tone effect of that lighter and slightly darker paint. Now, our transfers are not sealed, so I am going to, despite the fact that I used Fusion Mineral Paint, which has a built-in sealer, so the paint is okay, I am gonna go over my transfers with a clear wax just to give them a little bit of extra protection. So I'm going to apply my wax and I'm using Debbie's Design Diary because that's what I have open. If I had Fusion open, I would use Fusion. So don't sweat it guys. If you've got Annie Sloan, she's got a good wax too. 
um, some of the natural beeswax, like uh, even Fusion has a beeswax or from Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. Those are all good too, right? Use, we're using what we have. So I'm gonna get these all clear waxed. And then what I want to do is I wanna add a touch of gold. So I'm gonna take um, Golden Rule, which is a definite gold wax from DIY. And I don't wanna to have too much on my brush, but I just want to start to go over some of the areas, a little bit of the trim, definitely getting up in here in those wrapped groove areas. I've got my cloth so I can wipe back a little bit if I need to, but I think it's just going to be, you know, again, just that little bit of extra that kind of makes it pop. Hard for you to see, but I will take some close-up pics so that you can see um, the gold in action. <laughs> <laughs> but those are kind of the, the finishing touches for me. I'm not doing the gold everywhere. Um, you know, definitely on some of those bamboo struts and breaking up just some of that solid um, greeny blue color that we've got going on, adding a little bit of detail and definitely getting to kind of sit down a little bit in some of those grooves. Not gonna bother where the birds are because you're not just, you're just never gonna see it there. But uh, we'll do some of the edging and it just brings out a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna get that done and then uh, the hardware added and take some pics for you so you can see it up close. And this is our finished little piece. So a cute little redo, pretty fast. Um, using the all-in-one fusion paint made it go a lot quicker the transfers loved going over the finished top coat surface of the paint. Uh, little tip about doing your transfers onto uneven surfaces and it does give this wonderful little kind of almost waffle textured look to it which makes it just a little bit more interesting. I love the touch of gold. I put on the original hardware over this way. <laughs> <laughs> but I did add just a little touch of gold on top of the black to soften a little bit, tie it in a little bit more. I think it's super cute the way that it is. Definitely needed painting and zhuzhing up, I think. And small projects like this are a great way to use up odds and ends in your stash. Now, I used one full sheet of the transfer on the front. I used a partial sheet over here and a partial sheet just half a sheet over on this side so maybe i used one and two thirds sheets in total the um transfer comes with eight sheets i used five yeah f almost five four and 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 bits but likely almost five on the big hutch that I did, so the whole inside section. Um, then these sheets, I still have one full sheet and then pieces left, so I have at least one possibly um, kind of one mid-size, maybe this size kind of project or frame or something, and then some smalls as well. So don't overlook the fact when you are buying some of these transfers that you are breaking them up, that you're gonna be using them on multiple projects. If I was pricing this, I'm going to take a look at, um, you know, the little bit of paint that I used, um, the transfers that I used. I'm not gonna be charging it based on the full transfer, just on what one and a half sheets cost me. And then the price of the original piece, which I had thrifted. So, you know, you're still looking at a fairly reasonable nominal cost. If the price of the transfers puts it outside of what your market is going to do, then don't do the transfers. This would have been super cute with doing that two-tone paint effect and doing that light brushing of gold over top and just the hardware. Simple, definitely, probably even an easier sell than putting some parrots in you know, and a lot of uh, jungle greenery on there. Let me know what you think of this one, guys. Hopefully you picked up a couple of little tips along the way, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, 
Take care.